me. I am Dr. Heather Hirsch. I am the uh, clinical program director of the Menopause and Midlife Clinic at the Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts. And I am so excited to be here with you today. I want to talk about one of my favorite topics, which is supplements and vitamins to take in menopause and or at midlife. I am so excited. I get so many questions on this. So we are going to jump right in. Now, before we get to that, I want to make sure that you subscribe to my channel and hit that bell notification so you never miss a video. New videos should come out every Tuesday and Friday. I'm really excited to have you here with me because it's my mission to expose the gaps in women's healthcare, particularly at menopause and midlife, of which there are many. I have a wonderful podcast, Women's Health by Heather Hirsch. It's on iTunes, Spotify, anywhere you get your podcasts, and I will link that down below, as well as I want you to know about my course, The Complete Guide to Menopause, everything you ever wanted to know your doctor never told you. It is also linked below. It is a wonderful deep dive into all these topics, really nicely organized for you with lots of slides, handouts, presentations. It's a wonderful, wonderful value. You can never do it either too early or too late. So check it down in the link below. The first lesson is free, so you can go ahead and take that one anyways. Well, we are still in my bedroom. It is still during the social distancing, quarantining, COVID-19 pandemic. And I promise as soon as this is over, I will get some new background for you, hopefully in my office and, you know, just kind of spurs things up a little bit. If you're sick of looking at the background, I know I'm sorry. Um, today I want to talk about, as promised, my favorite supplements and vitamins for menopause and midlife. So let's start with my very favorite. Number one is vitamin D. Vitamin D is just one of the best supplements that you can take. It is a wonderful, wonderful supplement. In fact, it's not a vitamin. Vitamin D is a pro sterile hormone. That means it has numerous effects all over and throughout your body. So vitamin D is extremely important. There's a lot of things that vitamin D is good for. Number one, it's really good for just mood in general. Women are very um, sensitive to their vitamin D level. So I have many patients who their levels, once they hit 40 or maybe even 50, they really feel a boost in their mood, maybe a boost in their energy. They feel more like themselves. They feel less fatigued, whatever it is. I know that sounds like a miracle, but really it's such an easy thing to get your vitamin D levels up by taking an over-the-counter supplement. Now, I personally take, I buy the 5,000 units because I inevitably forget to take it once or twice a week. I take it every night when I'm brushing my teeth and that way I never forget. And I tend to get about two to 4,000 units on average a day because I will inevitably just kind of miss one putting my kids to bed and, and things like that. Now you cannot really get enough vitamin D from food. Even though milk is fortified with vitamin D and cereals and all of that, you really need to eat like an Alaskan, like cod and fish oil and, and a lot of fish products basically. So you really do unfortunately or fortunately need to be able to get it over the counter. You can go to any, um, any grocery store that you like and you can pick out any type of vitamin D. I would just stick to either the 1000 or up to 5,000 a day. You can safely take 10,000 units a day, but I probably don't think you need that much. So 1000 to 5,000 units a day is where I would start. Now, if you have a doctor and you wanna have your levels checked, I don't think that is a bad idea at all. In fact, I do check vitamin D levels very commonly because when they are really low, like less than 20, the, 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 the uh, normal reference range is usually somewhere around 30, but if they're less than 20, I will give my patients a prescription dose of very high vitamin D, 50,000 units to take once a week for 16 weeks. And then once they get those levels up somewhere around 30 or higher, then I make sure they stay on 1,000 or up to 5,000 units a day of vitamin D. So it's good for mood. We also think it has some anti-inflammatory properties and perhaps it helps to decrease cancer risk. We are still doing more data on that, but there is some data to show it does help reduce perhaps colon cancer. It is a really good building block as well for bones. Many of you know that. We're gonna talk about calcium and I didn't mention calcium as number one, but I did mention, mention vitamin D as number one. 
Vitamin D and calcium are the building blocks to good, strong bones. You need both. And so again, you want to make sure you're taking vitamin D for all of those things, mood, bones, overall health, perhaps it leads to decreased inflammation and immunity, all of that stuff is wonderful. And on top of that, we've really never seen vitamin D harm anyone. So that's also the baseline. Even if you say, you know, Dr. Hirsch, I hear that this can go one way or the other. You are not wrong. There are some people who do think that we don't need vitamin D or, or, or we don't need as much. You know, they'll say maybe 400 international units or 800 international units a day is enough. And I'm telling you to take one to 5,000. But again, there's never been a super therapeutic or too high level of vitamin D where anyone's been hospitalized or had any types of concerns with too high of vitamin D level. So you can't go wrong. So vitamin D is my numero uno. Now, before I get to my next ones, I, let's just talk about calcium because it just is a buddy of vitamin D. Now, calcium is, there's there's a lot of sticky points about calcium. And the, the bottom line is that you probably get enough calcium in a regular diet. And if you want to take a little notes, you know, 1200 milligrams a day is the goal for calcium. And again, the caveat is you probably get enough in your diet. And on top of that, Doctors and scientists do think the best type of calcium is if you can get it from food. Why is that? Well, when you take too much calcium that, um, you know, like in Tums, or maybe you're taking, um, you know, just the, the calcium supplements that you get over the counter, you're, we, we wonder if the excess calcium doesn't get sort of filtered out through the kidneys the way food does because they recognize calcium in food really well. And if that extra calcium stays in our body and perhaps calcifies in our arteries. Now we're looking into this a lot and this has been a hot topic for some time, but it's really why we definitely recommend getting calcium from your diet. It's just the best way to do it. Now, calcium, of course, is in dairy products. So, you know, yogurt, um, cheese, ice cream, uh, the good stuff. It's also in, you know, um, almond milk or c cashew milk, coconut milk, leafy greens as well has some calcium. So it's not, you know, many people do avoid dairy if they have, you know, inflammatory type of gut issues or they just avoid it, it causes bloating or whatever reason. There is plenty of other ways to get calcium in your diet that's not just from dairy products. That being said, you can often just Google calcium calculator and, and many of them will pop up. What I would recommend doing is putting in, you know, it'll prompt you for just what is your typical diet go ahead and put all that in and it will say, ah, you know, to reach 1200 milligrams a day, you probably need to take one tums a day. You know, this is really good, especially if you're not a dairy eater. And that way you can just say, okay, I need about this much extra in my, you know, as a supplement, but you're not overdoing the calcium supplements. Okay. So vitamin D, yes, you need to get it from a supplement. Calcium, best if you can get it from your diet, only take what you need after that. Okay. On to my next favorite supplement, which is magnesium. You can do magnesium in a, in a bunch of different ways. The most popular are magnesium oxide, um, and um, there's also a mag citrate. These are really, really nice, a gentle supplements that help with really important things. Number one, for most women, especially in midlife, is bloating really helps promote regular bowels without giving you a feeling of you gotta go or any of that kind of stimulant feeling. It's just very gentle, helps to relieve your bowels and keep you nice and regular. That being said, that should be plenty for you to want to add magnesium into your life. It's also really good to just help restore things. It's really good calming. It helps people, women sleep, sometimes helps with restless legs. You know, again, this is, these are all things that, you know, may vary from person to person, but again, it really can't harm you. Magnesium is also really good for preventing or helping to decrease what I call brain inflammation, really what I mean by this is migraines. So if you're a migrainer, I feel for you. 
it is a really difficult thing to live with. It can definitely affect your quality of life. And migraines can really worsen in the perimenopausal period for many women. So I would add some magnesium into your life. Now, I prefer magnesium oxide. It's usually a little bit cheaper and it's easy to get. And you should start with 250 milligrams up to about 500 milligrams. Now, I did mention it helps keep you regular. So if you take 500 or 250 and you have some diarrhea, then back off. I don't want you to have that side effect either. But, you know, for many people, 250 to 500 doesn't bother them. But if it does, you know, I want to make sure that it's fitting with your your life too. So, you know, you have to sort of think about you know, what, what what you can't and won't tolerate. But I'm a big fan of magnesium for all of those reasons. Now, speaking about women with migraines, another good supplement is riboflavin. And I would get that in about 50 milligrams. That's another nice supplement. So you could take magnesium, 250, and riboflavin, 50 milligrams at bedtime. So I really like magnesium at bedtime um, and vitamin D whenever. I take it them all at bedtime because I just remember when I brush my teeth, I also take my vitamins and any supplements that I am take that I am kind of taking. So what are my other supplements that I like after that? Well, I'm also a big fan of B vitamins. They are really good, especially for energy. Now, you might not necessarily need them, but like B12 is a really good option if you just really need a little bit of pep. If you're feeling a little fatigued, you can try some B12. You don't need a whole bunch, but again, you could just get an, a B12 uh, supplement in and of itself, or you can get like an all B that has all the Bs in it. So that includes the riboflavin and B6 and B12. Those are my kind of favorite B vitamins. So um, riboflavin is a B vitamin. And then I also mentioned B6. B6 is great for two things primarily. One is a great natural diuretic. So I'm not a big fan of prescription diuretics unless you need them for like a heart condition or a blood pressure condition. You definitely don't want to be taking diuretics to just get fluid off. It can lead to electrolyte issues and kidney issues. So you really want to take what's safe only. So B6 is a really nice gentle option just to relieve some gentle diuresis. It's also great for nausea. Yes. So if you suffer from nausea, you know, if you were, if you remember pregnancy, if you were ever pregnant, B6 is a great thing for nausea. So if you have any, you know, daughters or daughter-in-laws, or perhaps you have nausea, B6, also 50 milligrams, you can take it up to three times a day with each of your meals can really help in terms of just keeping some of that nausea at bay. And again, these are very gentle, you know, over the counter options that I like and that I think overall are very safe that you can try. So we talked about vitamin D, we talked about calcium, getting it in your diet, then we went to magnesium, riboflavin, a B vitamin, and then the other B vitamins, B12 for energy, and B6 for a little bit of um, natural diuresis as well as um, helping to keep nausea at bay. There's another vitamin that I really like, and this is called um, uh, L-methyl, L-methylfolate. Um, it is for anyone who has an MTHFR mutation. Now you probably won't know you have an MTHFR mutation unless a doctor has checked it. But what you need is the active form of folic acid. If you have that mutation, you could take all the folic acid supplements you want, but it won't convert it to that active form in your brain. So it can cause a lot of brain fog, haziness, or migraines or other mood issues. So L-methyl folate is a really great option. I'm a really big fan of this. You can, you can get it in a prescription, or it's also called I should have, sorry, I should have also said it's also called Deplin. Those are, that's its other name. You can get it as a prescription. You can also get it some, sometimes through over the counter or Amazon. And actually at the end of this, if you stick with me, uh, I'm going to send you to my Amazon store where I have actually all my favorite vitamins and supplements listed there. If you want to shop that 
or if you just want to take notes and get it at your own local store. But the um, Deplin is really good if you have an MTHFR mutation. Not everyone really needs this, but it is a really good option if you do have an MTHFR mutation. Okay, speaking of folic acid, folic acid is great if you are, of course, trying to get pregnant or during pregnancy, your first trimester, you really want a lot of folic acid, but midlife and menopause, if you're not trying to get pregnant, you know, you really don't need too much of folic acid. Now on to iron. Iron is a great supplement if you're very fatigued or if you're having very heavy irregular periods in perimenopause, definitely have your doctor check a CBC or hemoglobin to make sure you're not anemic. If you're anemic, you definitely want to take some more iron and you can take iron either in foods or you can take it in a supplement in an over-the-counter. When you're low in iron and therefore anemic, you can feel fatigued really easily, just very tired, not feeling like yourself. So that's when you really want to take some extra iron. There's a couple other supplements that I uh, like. Um, Costochondroitin is great for people who have aches and pains. CoQ10 is great as well for the same type of issues, aches, joint, achy, achy joints, um, diffuse pains, and as well, if you take a statin medication, I would definitely recommend CoQ10 to go along with that. I am gonna now talk a little bit about fish oil. I actually am not a big fish oil um, doctor in, you know, fish oil has calories in it. Again, I, this one is one where I'd rather see you eat fish if you can once or twice a week, and then you really don't need the calories in fish oil. Fish oil supplements can also sometimes cause some breast tenderness, which can also be problematic. So again, you really, if you eat fish, then I don't think that you need to take any extra fish oil. And so otherwise save your money on that. And then lastly, we talked about a lot of different types of vitamins. So what about a multivitamin? Well, the same sort of concerns with calcium that we talked about in the beginning of this video also exist with multivitamin. Again, we probably think, and there's more research to come, and there's going to be more data coming out on this, but the best thing that you can probably do is try and eat a healthy diet. You probably then don't need to spend the money on a multivitamin because you're probably getting everything that you need in a regular diet. And again, it's kind of nice to think about what is it that you need? So I'm all about individualization. If you can individualize exactly what you need, that's all you need to buy. So everyone needs vitamin D, we just do. And then think about what are the other vitamins or supplements that you need to supplement your life. Now there's a lot more out there, but I'm also gonna link my Amazon store link where I have under the vitamins and supplements, all of the ones I've talked about in this video and all the ones that I really recommend. You don't have to shop there, you can get them at your local grocery store, but I just put them there and put them up for you just to make it easy. And I really think this is an important topic because I also don't want you to be spending tons and tons and tons of money on supplements and minerals that you probably don't need. So you just want to stick to the ones that you do need. Again, hopefully you have a good doctor near you who can help you better determine what exactly it is you need. But I hope this video is also a little bit helpful for you to sort of narrow down, especially because I get this question all the time. So if you really want to learn more, again, you can take a deeper dive. Check out my course, The Complete Guide to Menopause. It is linked down below as well as my ebook, How to Talk to Your Doctor About Menopause. There there is tons of resources there as well as on my website, heatherhirschmd.com. Guys, thank you so much for listening to this video. Make sure if you haven't already, subscribe and comment below. What other supplements are you taking that you wonder about that I didn't mention? It doesn't mean that there's other ones that I disprove of. These are just the ones that I particularly like and definitely deem safe. And so, you know, let me know. What else are you taking that I, I should know about or that I could comment on? Thank you, warriors. Thank you so much. And I will see you again at next week's video. Bye-bye now. Oh.